the person who treads, person who walks to the path of seeking knowledge, Allah will make the path of Jannah easy for that person. So why are we coming out? For example, you're just coming out from your house near the next street or the few streets after that. And so every time you step, you emerge out from the house, you are actually treading, you are actually walking on the path of Jannah. So when a person thinks that way, oh wow, I'm going towards the path of Jannah, how motivated and how much eagerness and how much zeal and the enthusiasm and the interest that person will have. Are you understanding boys? Are you listening? So what's our second intention? We, when we have come, then what will happen is we will go towards the path of Jannah. <coughs> you know, let me tell you one dream, one of our students. Our madrasa is in Bradford called Jamia Khatamun Nabeen. When we started the madrasa, the first academic day, what happened was this student saw a dream. Especially the girls who are listening, listen to this because one of the girls saw the dream. So what she saw was that she was coming to Jamia Khatamun Nabeen and in front of the entrance, is, it was our beloved Prophet Sallallahu standing there. Just imagine how lucky that girl is. The Prophet Sallallahu told the girls to go downstairs and the boys to go upstairs. And then she saw that all the people, all the students, they were sitting on the wings of the angels. The angels spread the wings out. And they were all sitting down there. And she said, I saw a door far distance. And in Arabic it was written, Babul Jannah. The door of Jannah. So this girl and the parent, the father and the mother came to see me. And they said, Mufti Sahib, can you tell us the interpretation, the meaning of this dream? And listen to this. I said, Subhanallah, your daughter is so lucky. She's very honored and privileged. And she's been graced. Because first of all, let me tell you, this madrasa is called Jamia Khatamun Nabin. This is the last prophet's Jamia University. So it's his university, he's, it's the first day, he's inviting everybody, he's welcoming everybody, he's greeting everyone. That's his madrasa, he's inviting. And then the hadith says, Indeed the angels, they spread their wings out of happiness for the students who are seeking knowledge. We are so lucky, you know, when these kings go and the president, the prime ministers and these VIP, they spread the red carpet. What is that red carpet compared to the wings of the noble angels who are sinless? The creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are spreading wings out for every one of us. Just imagine boys and girls who are listening. How lucky we are. Aren't we lucky? Yes or no? Are you listening to me boys? Yeah? And the girls are listening as well. So we are so lucky. When I think about that, you know, many times I'm ill, I'm sick, I'm you know, tired. I said, no, no, subhanallah. How can I miss this opportunity? I need to go. So in my student days, let me tell you something. In my student, I studied in Darul Umbari. I can't remember missing a single day in that seven years. Because of this thought that if I miss, I'm going to miss the angels. I'm going to miss that opportunity going towards the path of Jannah. So that didn't mean I wasn't ill. I could remember sometimes I used to put a blanket over my head and I used to put some, you know, so much Vicks on my head and the teachers said, what is this smell coming out? Saif al-Islam, it must be you. I said, yeah, Ustadji, sorry, you know, I can't miss my lesson. Okay, so I will teach you. I'll go to your house and I'll teach you. So in this way, when I was doing my hives, those who were doing hives, so I had chicken pox. So I went to this madrasa. And the teacher, there were all the boys, no, oh, Saif al-Islam, but chicken pox is coming. It's going to spread to us. And as we know, one thing we have to remember, La adwa wa la tirata wa la hamma wa la safar. The hadith says, La adwa illness is not contagious. Now it is like, oh, this virus, everybody gets it. As a Muslim, only Allah gives illness. Everybody believes in that, don't we? Yeah? So I went and everybody said, no, no, we don't want to study. So my teacher felt sorry for me. She goes, better go home. My house was quite nearby. And I started to cry. I said, I, do, I don't want to go behind. I don't want to fall behind. So the teacher, every day after the sabbath, he used to come to my house and listen to my sabbath. He said to my lesson. Alhamdulillah, I, I was the first one to finish hips in the whole of the masjid uh, community area. So basically, I didn't miss a single day. Even, I didn't miss to go. Like, you know, school holidays when you go to Scarborough, Blackpool, and Lightwater Valley, and Alton Towers, and Flamingo Park. I never used to go to any trips. Because you had to come late, and I used to miss your sabak. So because of this, I never went there. I wanted to make sure that I attend the Sabbath. So what we need to make, the second intention is that we are treading on the path. We are walking on the path of Jannah. So how can we miss that opportunity? So this is another intention we have made. Another intention we make is, like in the Hadith, he says, 
whom Allah intends goodness for, He gives him the understanding of deen. So we think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has chosen every one of us. Are you understanding, boys? You know, if like Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullah, the great Imam says, I know what Allah has intended for me. How do you know? Because He has given me this opportunity of seeking knowledge. That's why, Alhamdulillah, I know Allah is happy with me. Allahu Akbar. You know, the students of deen, they can say Allah is happy. Why? Because my yuridillahu bihi khair. Whom Allah intends goodness for, He gives him the understanding of deen. That's why you have come to seek knowledge. You're understanding the hadith, you're understanding the du'as, you're learning how to read the Qur'an. So I am coming with this intention. So you make the third intention, that Alhamdulillah, because Allah has intended goodness. Just imagine the Prime Minister says, okay, Muhammad, come to see me today. I'm going to give you something. I intended something good. You'll be so happy. The Prime Minister is calling me. The MP is calling me there. Lord Mayor is calling me. But what here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator is so happy with us. I have intended goodness. Those who understand Arabic, khayran here, the tanween is for ta'zim, khayran azeeman. Or is for ta'amim, khayran kathiran. Lot of blessing. A tremendous amount of goodness. Allah gives him the understanding. So he has chosen. There's so many boys and girls. You ask the boys and girls in school, how many of them study in the madrasa? Many of them don't. Allah has given you that opportunity. Allah has given you that chance. So you should be making that intention as well. Another intention you could make is, like in the hadith says, what type of Islam? Ayyul Islam afzal. What type of Islam is good? So, taqra'u salama ala man arafta man lam ta'rib. One of the things the Prophet ﷺ says, do salam to the person you know and to the salam, do salam to the person you don't know. So I'm going to come and I'm going to make sure all my classmates, assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, afshu salam. I'm going to spread salam. So I'm going to make that intention. And do you know the reward of doing salam is one of the greatest. We don't realize that when we say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is another very important point. Many of us, what happens is we have taken those words, that English words instead. We say hello, thank you. No, we need to start to use Arabic words. So instead of saying hello, we should say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Get all 30. If you say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, how much reward do you get? 30. Assalamu alaikum 10. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah 20. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah barakatuh 30. So we want to get the full reward. You know on your mobile, you know it's Muhammad calling. You know Ahmad calling. What's the need to say hello? Then you say hello, hello, hello. No, 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 don't say that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Every time you're going to say, you're going to get reward. Sahaba ikram, they used to love doing salam. Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anuma. One day he says to his student, come with me. We're going to go to the bazaar. We're going to go to the marketplace. So his student tells him, why are you going to go to the marketplace? You don't buy anything. You don't even ask prices. What's the use? Because don't you know I go to do salam? Because in the marketplace, you'll see so many people. So many, more people I see, the more salam I will do, the more reward I will get. Allahu Akbar. And we don't want reward. You ask a child, Alhamdulillah, today I got enough reward. Because I did salam to two people. So I got 30, 60 now. I'm happy. But how many sins we're doing? We don't count the sins. So each one of us, we need to get that in mind. That when I come to the madrasa, I'm going to do salam to my friend. I'm going to do salam to my teacher. When I'm going to come out from my house, I'm going to do salam to my parents. When I go back, I'm going to do salam. So this salam, we need to make sure that we spread. The hadith says, afshu salam. Spread salam. Not only once. So every time when we phone, when we put the phone down, as salam. Not, no hello. Are you understanding? So from today, when I'm going to say hello, what are you going to say? as salam alaikum. When I'm going to say thank you, we're going to say jazakallahu khaira. Jazakallahu khairan. Full. Not just Jazakallah. Jazakallahu khairan. Okay. So this is the way we're going to start using Arabic words. The words that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used. Insha'Allah I will go and see you. Masha'Allah. Very good. Subhanallah. When you astonish, you say wow. You don't say wow. What do you say? What do you say? You say Masha'Allah. Or the word is Subhanallah. You won't say wow anymore. Are you? What are you going to say? MashaAllah and SubhanAllah. So these Arabic words which the Prophet used, we're going to use them. Okay? We're going to say like for example, we're going to meet somebody, inshallah, I will meet you. MashaAllah, that's very good. You don't, so you don't, like nowadays forget, wow, we say wicked. You understand? That's completely wrong. So we have to use these Arabic words. So I was saying about all this intention. Do you know another intention we could make is Man kharaja fi talabil ilmi fa huwa fi sabirillahi hatta yarji'a. The person who exits, who goes out for the seeking of knowledge, he's in the path of Allah. You know when you start, when you go in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your reward doesn't start from 10, it starts from 700. So now you make the intention, I'm in the path of Allah from the time I've come out 
from my house till the time I'm going to go, I'm in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the reward is immense. Going out in the morning, in the path of Allah, in the evening, like now it's in the evening. So what does it say? It is better than dunya and whatever it contains. So even more better than all these, you know, billionaires, we think about money, money, money all the time. But subhanallah, the Prophet ﷺ is better than the dunya and everything that it contains that you come out now just for that one and a half hours to learn the Quran, to learn the hadith, to come to the masjid, which is the best of all places. So I'm going to make that intention as well. Okay, so these intentions that we could make all the time. And another intention we could make is Al Jalisu Salihu Khairum Min Al Wahda. If I'm at home, I'm going to sit down at home myself and play with my PlayStation and play this Fortnite and all these rest of the things and waste our time. You know, students waste so much time on social media. So basically, I'm going to come and stay in the company of my teacher, of my classmates who are all seeking knowledge, learning the Quran, learning the Hadith, learning the Duas, learning the Adabs, the etiquettes, all these things I'm going to learn. So this good company is better than staying in solitude. So we'll make that intention as well. If you make that intention, that will be very good. Another thing that we can also make intention, Wallahu fi awni abdi ma kana abdu fi awni akhi. Allah's help continuously comes on the person who helps his brother. So I'm going to, all that time, if my brother needs help, he didn't come yesterday, he didn't learn this dua, I'm going to help him, I'm going to teach him, I'm going to assist him. My teacher, he's going to teach me, I'm going to go and teach my brother, my sister, my mother, my father, my auntie, my uncle, I'm going to tell them I learned this today. So you're going to spread this knowledge. So you are helping and seeking knowledge and then passing that on. This is the biggest help that you could give. So I'm going to make that intention as well. Also, like in the Hadith, he says, Indeed from the goodness is that you meet your Muslim brother with a cheerful face. So every time I'm going to meet my classmate, Assalamu alaikum, smile. That's what they say, smile is a sunnah. Smile is that only curve which makes things straight. You realize? It's a curve when you smile, but it makes things straight. Everyone, mashallah, is a good boy. So don't be gloomy, don't be sad, don't be down, depressed. You always, like as a Muslim, Sayyidina and Jarir ibn Abdullah Bajali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was a very handsome sahabi. Let me tell you something. <coughs> you know from all the galaxy of sahaba ikram, there were about 124,000 sahaba ikram. How many? About 124,000. About, there were the prophets about 124,000 and the sahaba ikram were about similar amount as well. And from them all, there were two sahabi, two companion. Do you know who the sahabi is? Can anybody tell me? Who is the sahabi? Anybody hands up? Who saw the Prophet also say that who saw the Prophet or who stayed in the company? Why do I say that? Because some of the Sahabi didn't see the Prophet but they stayed in the company. Like who? Those who were blind. Can you, can you mention any blind Sahabi's name? Anybody know any blind Sahabi's name? Those are, MashaAllah. Jazakallah khair hadisab. Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum. He was a Muazzin. He was a blind Sahabi. Did he see, see the Prophet? No, but subhanallah, what happened was he stayed in the company and he's one of the greatest sahabi. So sahabi definition is not only he saw the prophet, he saw the prophet or stayed in his company. So when you say this, it makes the definition complete. You understand? So this is the point that we have to also remember as well. So I was saying about the two sahabi who were so handsome. One was Dihya Kalbi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Does anybody know a speciality of him? Can anybody tell me something special about Dihya Kalbi? Whenever Jibreel Islam come in, he always come in. His uh, appearance, mashallah, beautiful, mashallah, jazakallah khair. So and whenever the Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasalam came, he came in the appearance of Dihya Kalbi. He was a very handsome Sahabi. You know, so he was so handsome that sometimes he had to cover his face because people were so amazed, dazzled at his beauty. He was so be handsome. Okay, so beautiful. And another one was Jarir ibn Abdullah Bajali. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Regarding whom Sayyiduna Umar Faluk Radiyallahu ta'ala says Yusuf Hadihil Ummah The Yusuf of this Ummah So these two So Jarir ibn Abdullah Bajali Radiyallahu ta'ala says Whenever I met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He always had a smile So smiling is very important We don't smile 
You know, we need to make this, you know, the smile, like we said, disease are not contagious, but that smile should be contagious. You see a brother, salam alaikum, smile, he smiles the next one, then you go and smile at your father, your mother, then they smile. So, like nowadays, everybody is depressed. Ajkal kisi ke dukh se itne dukhi nahi, jitne kisi ke sukh se dukhi hai. You know, son, this Urdu, subhanallah, he comes to mind. You know, we, we don't want to see anybody happy. I always say, when was the last time we read the dua, Adhaqallahu sin like Allah keep you happy. We see somebody happy, huh? why is he so happy for? I'm so jealous of him. This is, we should be happy. We see a Muslim brother happy, we should be happy. Shouldn't we? We should be always happy. And we should never ever express our happiness or no grief. لا تظهر الشماتة لأخيك فيرحمه الله don't express the happiness on the calamity of your brother. It might be possible. Allah will take the calamity away from you and put you inside. It's a very important point to remember. So what I'm saying is we need to make sure that we make... So the point is, subhanAllah, we don't really have too much time to speak. But the important thing is from today we can make all these intentions. You're going to make these intentions? I'll just go over it quickly again. We're going to make the intention of smiling at each other. So we get the reward of the sunnah. Is that okay? Smile, number one. Number two, salam. Okay? Another one we could make, al-kalimatu tayyibatu sadaqa. Every good word is sadaqa. When are you going to say any nasty remark? When are you going to make sarcasm? Oh, you look so far. You this like that. No, no, we're going to, we're going to always say, how are you brother? Are you okay? Sister, are you okay? So when you say, how are you brother? This is kalimatu tayyiba. And this is sadaqa. You'll get the reward of sadaqa. It's not just monetary sadaqa. You can get sadaqa by words. Say, so brother, how are you? How is your health? How's your parents? They're okay. So you speak to them in good words. So we make that intention as well. So smiling, one sunnah. Number two, salam. Number two, sunnah. Number three, good words. Number four, our intention should be that it is for us, for us to seek knowledge. We're seeking this knowledge. Number five, we are treading the path. We are walking the path of Jannah. Number six, we are in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number seven, we are making the intention that we're going to stay in the company of our teachers and our friends. We all seeking knowledge together, Al Jalis Salih, in the company of good people. Number seven, number eight, we're gonna make the intention that Allah's mercy is gonna be descending on us when we learn this and we spread this knowledge to somebody else. So these are just eight intentions I've told you. And we need to, one thing I like to finish off with, with this is how can we become good students, ideal students? It's very important how we can become ideal students. Do you know the great Imam Shafi Rahmatullah? He was so great. Let me tell you something. By the age of six, he became complete Hafiz of Quran. By the age of six. We don't even know how to read Alib Bata. And he learned the entire Quran. By the age of ten, he memorized Muatta Malik by heart. Muatta Malik has got over a few thousand ahadith. We learned it all by heart by the age of what? Boys listening? What age? Ten. By the age of fourteen, he was nominated as the official mufti of Makkah Mukarrama. By all the scholars. He was a scholar. He was a teacher by the age of 14. His students were older than him. Most of his students were older than him. So he, by the age of 14, he was complete. He lived a life, subhanallah. He was born on the 150 Hijri. After the migration of the Prophet, 150. He passed away 204. He lived only for 54 years. But he left a legacy, so rich legacy, that millions of people are following Imam Shafi Rahmatullahi, great scholar, amazing scholar. So he asked his teacher once, Shakautu ila waki in su'a hifzi. That I was complaining regarding my weak memory. Like many of us, we say, I can't memorize. Look, those who are doing hifz, hands up who are doing hifz, hands up. MashaAllah. So this is very important for you. Shakautu ila waki in su'a hifzi. He told him, su'a hifzi, stop. And he, that he had a weak memory. So what did the teacher say? Fa'usani ila tarkil ma'asi. He it advised me that leave all sins. Anything bad. Swearing, screaming, shouting, lying, backbiting, making sarcastic remarks. All these bad things. Stop it. <coughs> because why? Listen. Because this ilm, this Quran is nur, is divine light. And this light of Allah, you will not be given to a sinful person. So don't think that oh, I'm going to become a Hafiz. At the same time, I could continue lying. I could continue stealing. I could continuously backbite. I could continuously taunt and tease and you know, have jealousy. And Oh, no, no. We have to get rid of all these bad things. And then you will see, subhanAllah, your memory going strong. So two things I want you to 
learn and take today with all the eight intention first of all to increase our memory let me tell you about you know when i was doing my hips i started my hips at the age of 10 so we were learning our juz amma we started from the last juz amma yatasalum so when i finished it took me nearly 6 months i thought to myself how many juz in the quran 30 so if i learned one juz in 6 months how long will it take me to finish the quran 15 years. So I was 10, I was thinking I'll be 25 years old. Subhanallah. I was counting the pages and I was saying, oh, subhanallah, it's going to be too hard. Then I thought to myself, no. When it was my 11th birthday, the school teacher told me, you need to make a resolution that what are you going to do this year new? So in school, they'll tell you, I'm going to do my homework, I'm going to come to school at the right time. So I said, okay, I'm going to do all this, no problem. But two things I'm going to do is one thing is I'm going to read my five time prayers. I'm going to go to the masjid and I'm going to read my, all my five time prayers. And secondly is I'm going to, I thought to myself, if I want to memorize the Quran, my memory is so weak, I need to delete all the files. You know, your, our brain is like the USB stick. If you have put all the songs and the bad things, all the bad files inside, you filled it up, there's no space to put the Quran and the hadith and duas and everything. Can you? No. So what do you do? What do you, what do you have to do? MashaAllah, take out, delete the wrong files. So all these swears, all these... So, any bad things lying, all these songs, music, pop stars, film stars, Hollywood, Bollywood. We need to move, delete all those files. So what are we going to have left? Only the Quran, the Hadith, the Fiqh, the Adabs, the Masjid, the Madrasa, the Quran, Zikr. All these things we'll have. So what I did was I deleted all my files. You know, I used to watch all this football and all this at the age of 10. So 11th birthday I stopped. So before that, what is to listen to this? Before that is to take me two hours to learn two lines. I used to, to learn, I'm my dasar, I'm my dasar, I'm my dasar, I'm my dasar. Oh no, you know, I used to start getting a headache. Oh, oh it's going to be hard. And I used to count the pages. It's never going to finish. So, and then after I learned it, I forgot all over again. So I have to start all over again. So I said, it's never. So 11th birthday, when I deleted all the files, 11th birthday, I deleted all the files. So then I started learning from the first para. So then what happened was, miracle happened. So I used to read each line twice and I used to know it. So it took me 10 minutes to learn two sides. Before it took me and it two hours to learn two lines. Now it took me 10 minutes to learn two sides. I'm talking about Alhamdulillah myself. And this thing, I, the reason I'm saying it to you because I really want you to do the same as well. And I've told that to my own sons. My, all my sons, they're Hafiz. My daughter is a Hafiz as well. So she started at the age of 7. She finished at the age of 10. So all I told them. And what did, so I told them, look, if you finish, I will take you to the Masjid Al-Aqsa. My daughter always wanted to go to Masjid Al-Aqsa. My sons as well. I said, okay, they finish. And then I took them to Masjid Al-Aqsa. Then I told them, look, if you become an alima as well to my daughter, I'll take you to Hajj. So she finished her alima. Then I took her to Hajj. So incentives. So basically what I'm trying to say to you is, every one of us, we can do it. Allah has given us that brain. This brain, everybody got it. This aqal Allah has given to every one of us. So what are we going to do from today, boys and girls who are listening? We're going to delete all the wrong files. So all these bad things, all this wasting, you know, all these games and PlayStation, we need to stop it all. And we're just going to be putting the right files because this brain, everybody's got the right amount of brain, but depends on what we have occupied it with. Do we know the 11 players of Manchester United and Liverpool or do we know the 10 companies who have given the glad tidings of paradise? Do we know the 11 wives of the Prophet or do we know the 11 any uh, football players of Manchester City? So you need to ask yourself, what, what are you learning? So this is very important. That's very important one thing. Secondly, what I want everybody to make sure in mind is respect of teachers and respect of parents. If we do that, we will surely, our brain, inshallah, we need to always ask du'as. You know one of my daughter, she was in a final year. So in Jamia Clayton, there were 73 girls in a class. So I, she phoned me the day before the exam. She said, Abu, please do dua. I pass. So I said to her, what do you mean by passing? You have to come first. Because Abu, 73 girls, I know they're almost all older than me. How am I going to be any coming first? It's impossible. I said, nothing impossible. I said to her, let me tell you this formula. Like we said, two are two is four. I said, if you want success, Effort plus dua equals success. I will do the dua, you make the effort. You understanding? We need to work hard. We can't just go home and close our Quran and Hadith and everything and we'll, next day we come down. We need to put some effort at home as well and get the duas of our parents and our teachers. So I did the dua, she made the effort. Alhamdulillah, out of 73 girls, she came number one. 
So what I'm trying to say is, I'm not here to praise my daughter, Nauzubillah. What I'm trying to say is, everything can be possible. Everything is possible. And I, I say that because Alhamdulillah, we in our JKN mothers, we got 1,000 students. I got about 100 staff working, Alhamdulillah. And I've told that to my students as well. That if you do that, you will be successful. And those students who follow, they still will become Hafiz. You know our girls, they become Hafiza by there in two years. They become Hafiza double faster than the boys. Boys, it takes them four years. Girls, it takes them two years. Because mashallah, they put the effort in. So each boy, so basically, with making sure that our brain, which is the USB stick, we need to make sure that we delete all the wrong files, put all the right things, then you'll see the difference. Start doing it today. Inshallah, you'll do it. Inshallah. And secondly is respect. Always, never ever disrespect your parents. Always make sure, whatever they say, many times you say, no, I don't want to do it. No, no. There's no such thing as no to the parents. Abu, whatever you say, I'm going to do it. Mother, Ammu, whatever you say, I'm going to make sure I do it. Ustad's respect. If you have these two things, do you know Imam Shafi Rahmatullah, how did they become so great? He says, when I used to be sitting in the front of the teacher, I used to turn the pages so softly that it didn't disturb the teacher. The respect. Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah, he says in his house when he used to lie down, his Ustad's house, Hamad Rahmatullah, he says, I never used to stretch my legs towards my Ustad's house. That's not something which is guna or something or sinful or something. No, no, the highest level of respect. There was one person who told him so, a mas'ala and what happened was once he was walking uh, on, mounted on a camel and all his students were with him and this person was a road sweeper. So he dismounted from his camel and the other students, all his friends, colleagues, they said, is there something special? He goes, no, oh, this person who is a road sweeper is my teacher. Out of respect, I have dismounted from my camel. Allahu Akbar. So it is very important. The more respect we have, that's, that's why in the Urdu saying, Be adab, be nasib. Ba adab, ba nasib. The person who doesn't have adab, he will be unfortunate. The person who has adab, etiquette, will be always successful. Okay, my boys, girls, listening. So these are the few points. Everybody, you've understood everything, yeah? All the boys, yes? So these points, the eight intentions, number one. Number two, memory. We're going to delete all the wrong files. Get the good files in. And number three is respect of parents and respect of teachers. Okay, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, ahsan al jaza. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.